Well, hello there. I'm building the second generation of my fuel storage system. That's a fancy name for a 55 gallon barrel painted yellow. The first generation was on that old pallet over there. That pallet was just too weak, and then the way that I had the fuel tank held down was not strong enough. So I want to make sure that I'm attaching to this outside 2x4 here instead of one of these pallet rails like I was doing the first time. So I took the drill and I drilled in an angle in here. <coughs> By drilling in an angle, I allow the hook to fit right in there. So the thought process is I'll just run this hook up in there right to that hole just like that. Oh, nice. Run it over. Now you could tell I was real particular about that angle as it was very important that it be exactly right or maybe not. I can't tell whether you're sarcastic or not. Oh, okay. Well, let's leave it at that then. Okay. It's good to keep you confused. That's my normal state. See how perfect that was? Yeah. You're all happy with yourself, aren't you? Oh, I'm thrilled. It does fit in there very nicely. You're just making more mess for me to have to clean up in your shed. How many times have you had to clean up today? Oh, I don't know, like three already, four. I think I cleaned up once. It seems like I do more sweeping on the floor than any other project. Uh huh. You think people would want to see a video of us sweeping, sweeping the, floor? the floor? No. That's like boring. Yeah, adding a shed was just adding another room to have to clean. I want to tell you a little bit about the pump we got. I'll include a link to the exact pump that I bought, uh, so I won't make it a mystery in that sense. I don't remember the brand name off the top of my head. But just a, a, a few features about it. Being a crank-driven pump versus a back-and-forth pump, you can actually crank this one backwards. So one of the advantages of this is that you can crank it either way and pump either way. You could put this in a source container and fill your tank from that. Okay, I don't think I would do it because of the dirt and everything like that, but some people do in fact do that. They go buy their fuel in five gallon containers, come back home and you can pump it into your tank this way. This is, this is what I was talking about where the, where the hose is held here. That hole is just hardly big enough and it's a round hole, square peg round hole, right? Sometimes it fits in there nicely, sometimes it gets kind of bound up. There are a bunch of different pumps like this available this one I chose specifically because it had the hose included. The hose and this nozzle, if you call it that, included. And it was essentially the same price as several others that didn't have it included. There's one negative to this hose being included, though. And that is this particular hose kinks up here. Okay? So probably what I need to do is find some heavy wire or something that would hold this out further at a little bit of an angle. But since it sits there all the time, it, it gets kinked. Hmm. Okay? And then the same thing happens if you put this in the tractor and let it hang down there, it'll, it'll kink there. Um, so the hose is just not quite sturdy enough to avoid that kinking. But other than that, I'm very happy with this pump. It's specifically meant for 30 gallon or 55 gallon drums. Uh, this adjusts in height. I have it all the way down on the bottom, because that's where you want to pull from. Uh, this fits in the bigger bunghole. The reason I choose the pallet approach is for twofold. Number one, I can carry it with the tractor. The other reason to choose the, the wide pallet like this, it's not very apt to tip over once it gets in the truck. The reason this is a little bit leaning like this is because I've got these pulled really tight. It's put a bind on the whole pallet. But that's really okay. I'm not worried about a little back and forth like that. I just don't want it to turn over. So, Christy, you ready to go put it in the truck? Go get some fuel? Yeah. We're here at the filling station now, and the camber angle wasn't so good, so I decided to speed it up a little bit. One thing I like to do is add stanodyne fuel treatment when I'm filling up. We're only getting 20 gallons of diesel this time, so four or five ounces should be enough. The thing about the Honda Ridgeline is you can step up in there. It was a lot harder with the Tacoma. Not yeah, climbing, o climbing over the tailgate is a lot more difficult than just using stepping right up to yeah. the bumper and stepping in. The side open door really does make a, make a nice help. I'm putting the fuel tank back in its normal position here, and I wanted to demonstrate how the pallet forks, when used with a little creativity, can really provide a nice hand to get something positioned exactly where you want it to be.
really doesn't pump that hard. It takes a lot of pumps to do it. On their website it says 13 revolutions per gallon. I think it takes more revolutions than that to make a gallon. And that's all there is to it. Remember to take a look at heavyhitch.com, www.heavyhitch.com for a lot of useful accessories for your little John Deere. I'll talk more about the ballast, the heavy hitch ballast unit in a later video. You've seen a lot of videos with the tooth bar. Wow, what an addition to the tractor. Catrill referred to it as tractor steroids. She also calls it the spork. Go to heavyhitch.com. You can get a 5% discount with coupon code TTWT for Tractor Time with Tim. If you enjoyed this episode, please press the like button and subscribe to our channel. If you have any more comments or questions about our fuel storage solution, don't hesitate to put them in the comments section. Remember to look in the description for the link to where to buy this pump. And we'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.